Good afternoon. We good evening. We are here with three groups. We studied piano over this uh, summer camp, and we want to show you, like they say, show and tell what we've learned. Thank you.
people out there. This didn't sound so loud. I was like, <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to take this down because I'm far enough away from you so you can hear me clearly. My name is Armando Silva, and I'm the Arts Program Director for Multicultural Education and Counseling through the Arts, or as we like to say, Mecca, because that's a lot of words thrown together. That was Miss Paulette, and you recognize your students. They will be in this program that you're getting shortly. There was a bunch of them, right? A bunch of beautiful children that came to our program. And so I didn't get everybody's picture on time, et cetera. So then we took the initiative to take everybody's picture this morning and then try to fit everybody into the program. And so I got it right like 10 minutes I can get there, right? But then the lights downtown, they had their own thing. They're like, no. And I kid you not, every single red light I hit before. Thank goodness there was not an Astros game right now. So before we continue, I want to introduce you to our visionary leader and founder, the reason why all of this is here, Ms. Alice Valdez. She's going to share some news about our program and a little bit more about Mecca and its history, et cetera, all that wonderful stuff. Um, like I said, this, you'll get a paper copy of it soon. Hopefully that John Taylor on his way out off the press does not get every single red light. In the meantime, if you have your phones, normally I say don't, but use your phones, don't use your phones. But in the meantime, if you have your smartphone, you can go to the Mecca website and it's on the front page. On the front, you'll see it, you can open the program there. Okay? It's really cute. <laughs> Some of those pictures, I'm just melting my cold, cold heart. <laughs> All right, I think Mrs. Valdez is ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Alice Valdez. Sorry, I have to sit, getting too old. Um, and now I can't see anything. I can't see my notes. Okay, soy Alice Valdez, la directora ejecutiva y fundadora de MECA, educación multicultural y asesoramiento a través de las artes. MECA sirve a la comunidad a tra través de cuatro componentes, programas de educación artística, servicios de apoyo social y académico, presentaciones y exposiciones anuales, y como un centro cultural comunitario. MECA ha apoyado a generaciones de artistas que de otro modo no tendrían acceso a oportunidades de expresión creativa. Me gustaría darles la bienvenida a, a Mecca aquí en TBH, Talento Bilingüe de Houston. Mecca cumple 45 años y es el mayor centro cultural latino de Houston. Estamos orgullosos de nuestro compromiso con la educación y nuestras presentaciones de artes escénicas y visuales. Espero que disfrutas de nuestra galería afuera antes que se van. So, uh, I'm here to let you know that we're different very different from most programs. Normally you're either an arts program or you're an education program, um, but we're a little different. We do both, and we also do social services. And that was because Fourth Ward, Northside Heights. Um, we recently moved over here uh, to uh, assist Mayor Turner in providing programming here and we've taken advantage of 
this beautiful stage and uh, many of our presentations over here. And I, uh, state of the art for about 250 people. So we're very excited. Uh, and so much, some of our programming will have to move over here because we'll be working on this theater in the building. Uh, however, we will have our Dia de los Muertos uh, events over at, at Dow School again, because we won't start the, the renovation till after the festival. Uh, but I, I want to just speak to how lucky your children are with the people that have been with them every day for eight weeks. And um, so please take time to thank them um, because whatever need they had, we try to be supportive for them. And you'll see what they do here tonight. Uh, normally in a professional company, they're given six weeks to put up a musical. And I decided this year we were gonna do a musical theater piece because we hadn't done one in many years. In the past, we've done West Side Story, Annie, uh, just various productions. And so we, he is a graphic artist, freelancer, but he's very talented in many, many other uh, artistic ways. And he wrote a book about Boncho Spancho. And what we did is we invited certain artists to turn that into a, a performance piece. And that's what you'll be seeing tonight. Uh, they, Jackie Krinke, the is a, a, an actress and a, a writer. She wrote the libretto, and one, I think one of the that we're using tonight was composed by Jose Hernandez. Uh, in between one act and another act, and what we're hoping to do is to uh, copyright it and send it out to schools throughout the country and see if they'll buy it, which would be very helpful to raise funds for our program here. Uh, so your, your children are exposed to a lot of uh, uh, wonderful artists in various capacities, whether it's dance or music or visual art, and uh, we enjoy having them here in the summer. Usually the summer is my favorite time, except uh, this year, it's been so hot, and uh, <laughs> I can't say this is my favorite time, but um, we're, they're, we're very pleased uh, to imagine children, but you know, the arts is not something you can, if you really want to be good in a particular uh, art field, you can't just take it in the summer. You have to study it year round. And you need to think about that if you think your child has that talent. And we do offer those programs, um, you know, in the summer of all day and in the um, after school uh, from September to May. Uh, so don't forget that we are uh, here for you year round. And uh, the other thing is uh, normally I would go through and, and introduce you to all of the teachers. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, at the end of the program have them come forward so you can see them uh, if you, because many of you never came into the program, you drop your child off, trust that they'll be okay, and then you, you would walk away. Um, and that was helpful so that we would spread COVID. Um, but, so we'd like you to meet them this evening and, and inter have them introduce themselves to you uh, and you might consider uh, the, your child taking more permanent classes. I want to show you one last thing before uh, I leave, but I'm going to get off the stage. This is a baby cello. 
and we were very blessed. Uh, an ensemble, a professional ensemble for the Houston Symphony had a concert about a year and a half ago and raised money to uh, help us buy the cellos. And we have five different cellos from the smallest one to the adult size. And what I want to say to you about cello is if you want your child to get a full scholarship to a uh, to whatever school they go to, have them play cello, have them play oboe or bassoon. Those are the three instruments that are always needed in the orchestra. And you don't have to major in music. You can just take the course, take uh, orchestra class, and you can still get, uh, you know, uh, funded scholarships. And the thing is, though, this is probably one of the most beautiful stringed instruments that is on this earth. Uh, but it's really kind of cute, but it's small. And, uh, you know, if you think your child might want to come and try it, uh, they're welcome to have come see me and we'll give them a cello and uh, show them what they can do with it. Uh, but uh, if we would be very happy to, to start them on the cello. At some point, we would probably have to bring me. I, I do a lot of the beginning strings, uh, but she a wind player. But I, when, we, when I was in school, I had to learn all the instruments in order to teach instrumental music. So uh, we welcome you to consider this or have your child consider it. And um, I wish I could play something for you on it, but I can't right now. So, and there are so many people to thank. When you get your program, you'll see this didn't happen with just one or two people. There was a lot of help, but um, there, and then there's people you don't even see, like Liz coming in at 6.30 in the morning to make sure the ACs are on and the theater, or the auditorium, like uh, the auditorium ACs are on and go off um, working out whatever they can. And then Carolina here who is um, in her real life is a, a nurse in a public school and who's helped us uh, with various things. She's been so good um, at handling the kids. And, and of course, she has a lot of experience having being, being assigned to a public school. Who was just talking to you, that's uh, Armando <laughs> Silva. Yeah. I know him as Noel, but his, his real name is Armando. And, uh, he uh, is quite a talented man. He uh, does. He's a. He was a professional dancer, and he uh, worked with the Dallas Black Dance Theater for uh, 12 years, something like that, before he came back home to work with us. And he was a student of Mecca's. We have a lot of students who used to be with with us who are now teachers. And that's very exciting to have the generations continue the program. But in September, we're having our 45th anniversary. We're having a big gala on September 23rd uh, and to help raise funds for the program. And so, you know, we hope that you will join us. And uh, you have to realize that COVID really affected everybody's funding. So however you can help would be really special. Thank you so much. All right. Yes, I used to be. I they can't tell anymore, but I used to be a little deaf dancer. Um, but I, I love, I, I must say that this truly is a labor of love, as you can see. Mrs. Valdez has been doing it for 45 years. I only came in 1991. <laughs> and it's because of Mecca, I can truly say 
um, that my success has been because of Mecca. Uh, I remember Alice driving us to college visits. Southern Methodist University for me is where I ended up on a full scholarship. Again, yes, it was my talent, but if not for them introducing me to these possibilities, I would not have known that they were there. As a dancer, going to New York is like what you do, right? Because of Mecca, I was able to, I earned my scholarship to the dancing school, but they paid for my room and board at uh, New York University on Fifth Avenue. I was living it up in high school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stalling simply just a little bit to make sure that we can get ready. Your kids did an amazing job um, every day from 9 until 4 o'clock, 4.30, uh, especially this last week. They were rehearsing, right? And so we, we took very good care to make sure that each child was, in, even if it's for uh, one set of eight, eight counts, right? We make sure that everybody participated. But it's important for you to know, too, that all of the artwork that's up, they all were a part of that. Um, the props that you'll see, it was led by the visual arts instructors, but the kids actually also worked on those props. So they really deserve a round of applause. So I'm going to be quiet now. And ladies and gentlemen, Pancho and Diego Pancho, the leader of
fish, and crunchy onions. Yummy, he thought. However, his classmates did not share his opinion about his succulent meal and began making impolite comments again. Phew! That looks nasty. Yeah, it smells funny too. For Pancho, his first day at school seemed an eternity. Finally, school was over and Pancho hurriedly ran to his school bus. The climate had changed and the weather had gotten cold. Pancho remembered the beautiful and colorful poncho that his grandma had woven for him. He took it out of his backpack and put it on. The poncho was his favorite garment, not only because it had given him comfort during the cold Peruvian weather, but because weaving ponchos was a textile tradition that his family had passed on from generation to generation. Comfortably wearing his colorful poncho, he happily climbed the bus. Again, the kids were cruel and made fun of his poncho and its indistinctive alpaca smell. He dresses weird. Yeah, he looks and smells funny. Don't sit next to him, mentioned another. In a short life, Pancho had never stood out so much. Sad and confused, he asked himself, how can the familiar things that gave him so much comfort and made him feel right at home could be the same ones that made him feel different, rejected, and almost an outcast? Once at home, he sat in mind the odyssey he went through on his first day of school. Stop it up. 
What is wrong with being from another place? Don't wanna be different. Oh Lord, hear my needs. Please let me be like the other kids. Cause I'm asking myself if I should follow through or give up already and go back to the room. standing alone in a deserted place in the middle of a dense fog, when suddenly an Incan figure appeared before him.
danza tijera, con los ríos carnavales, con su danza de tijeras, de sus bailes principales, la galante marinera, de sus bailes principales, la galante marinera, a mucha. about the Peruvian culture. 
They screamed it. He felt it was going to come out of his chest. He was so proud of himself. For that day, he learned that no matter how far away he was, he could always be connected with his people and his culture. But one of the most important lessons he learned was that it was okay to be different. Giggling, he thought to himself, you can take Pancho out of Peru, but Peru will always live in Pancho's heart. this entire camp. We're going to ask that you exit out to the either of the doors and then follow the process that we have with the numbers and the counselors and the teachers will get them for you from the red room where they're uh, storing their things. So if you don't go ahead and exit out of either door and out to your cars and then give them your number and we'll bring those kids to you. Thank